Good morning. Good morning. I know it is um, early this morning. I've been up for for about an hour, an hour or so, about since about six o'clock, <clears throat> and I feel like I have a word from the Lord for you guys this morning. You guys share this if you're watching this for the first time, whether on Facebook or uh, YouTube. I'm Emily Rose Lewis, and I'm a prophetic speaker and author, and I have a word from the Lord for you today. So you guys share this, and it'll bless some other people. I'm going to pray while some people are getting on, and uh, then I'll go from there. So Lord God, we just invite you into our morning. We invite you into our day. We thank you for another opportunity to live and breathe and have our being in you. We thank you for another day where we can seek your face, where we can praise your the work that you have done and the work that you are doing here on the earth lord god we ask that you would open us open our eyes our ears and our heart to you lord help us to see and recognize how you are working and moving in the earth moving in our lives moving through our lives lord we want to be so in tune to you we want to be able to uh, move at the impulse of your love lord we want to hear your voice we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice, God. And teach us to be quiet in the secret place. Teach us to tune ourselves in to the sound of heaven, Lord God. We want to be used as containers, as vessels for your glory. Good morning, good morning. You guys share this, tag some people. I've got a word from the Lord. It's impromptu, so I've got like, uh, the Lord will speak one thing, and I'm just going to expound on it as, as led by his spirit. But I'm going to just pray for a minute for you guys. I pray that each person this morning, as they go throughout their day, that they would be filled with inexpressible hope that good things are going to happen, that good things are happening. Lord, that you are bringing revival to this nation, that you are bringing revival to homes, that you are bringing the prodigals home, that you are bringing uh, marriages together. You are healing relationships, Lord. You are building up the foundations. You are building up a holy house, a holy priesthood. You are working in your body to make us without spot or blemish your bride. Lord God, you are cleansing us in, in the water, the washing of the word. You are clean. You have cleansed us with the blood of Jesus, Lord. I thank you that we can come to you with full assurance of faith and ask for what we need, Lord God, knowing that we are told to come boldly to the throne of grace. And so, as we come this morning, as we come this morning, okay, Laura, we'll see you. Um, we ask, Lord, that you would search us and know our heart and see if there's any unclean way in us and lead us in the path. Of righteousness for your name's sake that you would cleanse us from everything that contaminates our mind our body our spirit that you would deliver us from any um, bad habits that you would deliver us from wrong mindsets that you would deliver us from um, from all and anything that could hinder us from beholding your glory Lord change us change us stir up actually we are to stir up so this morning i pray that we are stirred up pray with me in agreement stir me up lord with fire stir me up lord with holy fire give me that taste of when i first knew you give me that passion of when i first knew you when i came to the lord i remember i was so on fire for the lord and i'm still on fire for the lord and, my, and I had family members that said, oh, you know, you'll get past the honeymoon phase or whatever. The thing is about the love of God. The thing is about his spirit. His mercies are new every day. And his passion can burn without burning out, unlike a human passion. Now, we have slow, steady joy. We have slow, steady peace. But the Lord can make every day fresh and new. The Lord can make every mundane task full of glory and glorious as we give thanks to him and do it in his presence. And so we pray, we believe, and we receive that passion for you, Lord. We stir up that fire within us, Lord, that we would burn brightly for you, that it would not go out, that we would not fall asleep, that we would stay awake. The Bible says, wake, wake up, rise, O sleeper. And so we pray 
and we come into agreement that we are wide awake, spiritually speaking. We see the Lord in all his glory. We see the Lord in all his glory. We do not let our trials move us. We do not let our circumstances shake us because we are rooted and grounded in him. We are rooted and grounded in his word. We are rooted and grounded in him. How? By believing. By believing that his word is true. By believing that his word is true and his promises are yes and amen. That what he has spoken, he will accomplish in our lives. That what he has promised, he will bring to pass. That he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I haven't even got into the prophetic word. I'm just talking while the Lord that brings some people on. You guys share this. Tag some people. <clears throat> I'm going to read a scripture. And then I'm going to... Uh, to tell you, I'm going to release what the Lord has said to me prophetically for us in this season. And um, it's out of 1 Peter 1. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. What are we supposed to set our hope on? What are we supposed to set our hope on? Many people are experiencing hope deferred. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. What are you hoping in? What are you putting your hope in? The Bible tells us, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. We are to be looking heavenward. We are be expectantly waiting the return of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Do you know we are called to holiness? God has called us to holiness. He has anointed us for holiness. We are to be holy because this is how we see the Lord. This is how we connect with God. When we are holy as he is holy, we see him as he is in all his glory. And so, Lord, we ask, God, that you would give us the grace. That you would give us the grace. We can't. This is something we cannot do in our own human efforts. This is something we set our hope on God. And we walk in the grace given us to be holy as he is holy. Since you are, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Reverent fear. We are just passing through. This world is not our home. We are here to leave an impression. We are here to bring the kingdom of God. We are here to bring the hope of, of salvation. We are here to expand his heavenly kingdom realm here in the earthly realms. But this is where we're not to settle in here because this word, this world is passing away. This world is passing away. We're going to get new bodies. There's going to be a new earth. And so we, we need to not get too dependent on the things of the earth. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay, the, the word is coming. The word is coming forth. The Lord says, this is a season of great dependency on me. This is a season where I want you to be holy and I want you to rise up out of the ashes of defeat, out of the ashes of despair, out of yesterday's problems, out of yesterday's issues. I want you to come up higher, says the Lord. I want you to come up higher with me, says the Lord of hosts. Be holy as I am holy by depending on nothing but me. I am your source. Jehovah Rapha, I am your source. Jesus, 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 thank you, Lord. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without spot or blemish, he is setting us free from all ancestral curses from all ancestral residue from the things that our family has done wrong from the ways that our family has not been holy the lord has adopted us into his own family and we have a new heredity in jesus christ we are righteous in christ we must learn to walk in our righteousness and the lord says in this season i am weaning you from past comforters i am weaning you from those things that you needed before in the last season, some good, some evil, 
But either way, the Lord's saying he is weaning us off of dependencies outside of him. He is weaning us off things that we relied on for our stability outside of him. He is weaning us off things that we relied on for our comfort outside of him. And it's good to understand what is happening. It's good to, because he's taken us into a next level season. And in order to get there, we have to be fully dependent on him and let go of those things that lies behind and press them on to the good things that are ahead. He was chosen, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake, for our sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him so that your faith and hope are in God. There is a lot of people who think they've been walking in faith, but what they've been walking in is not faith in God. It's faith in a specific outcome. It is faith in God doing it a certain way. And God is saying, and there's a real fear that can come on you when you believe in for a specific outcome and you get a word like this. You say, am I supposed to just quit believing for what God has said to me? God is saying, I want you to come up higher in me. I want you to come up higher in me where you put your faith and your hope in me and me alone. You put your faith and hope in my goodness and there is nothing to fear taking your faith and hope off of a specific outcome to put it on God alone. Because what is going to happen is it's going to increase your faith to believe the things that God has placed in your heart, but you aren't going to be focusing on them. Okay, there's a couple of prophetic things that the Lord has spoken. One of the things is, and I, and I wrote about this on my wall, I said that th this is a season where babies are going to be birthed, where things that you have been carrying in seasons past are going to come to fruition and that you're going to be able to see these things that you've been carrying in the spirit come to the natural. But unlike in seasons past, I said the delivery is is going to be easy. And some people were even commenting like they didn't see that. Yeah, it's time to push. It's to, and the Lord is saying, no, you do not have to push. What I am bringing forth in this season is not by human effort. What I am bringing forth in this season is not by your faith effort to believe that it is going to come to pass and come forth. If you are pregnant, if you have developed this baby, if the Lord has developed this baby within you, if you are carrying the fullness of something that God has placed in you, this is the season where it is going to be birthed without effort. And I believe it's going to be by cesarean section. You know what a cesarean section is? You don't push. You don't even necessarily labor. You go in early. Oftentimes, it's a scheduled appointment. The doctor schedules the appointment. And you get numbed, so you don't even feel the pain. I'm not saying there's not a recovery process. But the surgeon himself makes an incision and, and pulls that baby right out. And this is a prophetic word I see in the spirit what God is saying here. So it's, an, and, and part of it is because he is wanting you to come up higher in him. So he wants you to bypass all the effort, all the spiritual, I got to make it happen. And sometimes you do have to birth things that way through intercessions and groans and, and, and holding on with your faith and fighting. And, but the Lord is saying, this is a word for the spiritually mature. Okay. Put your hope and your faith in God and know this that if God has put something in you and he has developed it within you and you have clung to him and fed on the word and and kept yourself healthy this thing is going to be birthed in this season without the effort without the pressure without the pushing without the groaning but you have to get in alignment with the rest of the things I'm saying. And get, don't conform to the desires. And do not conform to the, the, the world. And do not allow the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You've got to get into that place where you are heavenly. Looking for, waiting his return. Knowing that he is doing something in your life that is greater than you. It goes above you. It goes above your family, your 
your desires, the things that you want. God has a full plan that includes the whole world, that includes all his body and what he is birthing in us. You have to show up. You definitely have to show up, but the the great surgeon is making the incision and it's coming. It's coming without all the effort. So if you in the past have had to birth things through a lot of spiritual pressure, pushing, you know, gasping for breath, hoping, all of this stuff, hope everything's going to be okay. You know, the reason why they do cesareans a lot of times is because the baby is breech. Because the baby is upside down. And so even if you're like, but, you know, I know there's still things that are wrong side up about this. There are still things that need to be worked out. And if you push, if you labor, if you have that baby in your own effort when it's breech, the baby's in danger of not making it. And so I'm asking you by the Spirit to receive this word, if this word is for you, and don't do that. Because there's some things that are upside down. There's some things that it will be detrimental if you try to labor and push and push and labor and make it happen on your own. And burst this thing with your efforts, even your spiritual efforts. The Lord is saying, I want you to rest in me. I want you to learn to be quiet. Quiet your spirit. We had our first uh, Kingdom Living Academy class last night. And, and I was teaching about being quiet, soaking in his presence, just enjoying the Lord. Okay, so that's the first part of the word. The second part of the word, or actually I said it before, is the, about dependency. God is weaning us from, from other dependencies. Uh, right now, the, how he started speaking this to me is I am been wanting to fast. I've been praying to fast and I've been breastfeeding. My daughter turns two November the 1st, which is Friday. And the Lord has dried up her source of milk, but she still wants to nurse. So she is trying, but there's nothing there. And there is a period of time where the Lord will let you still go back to something but there's nothing there for you anymore. There's nothing there for you anymore. And the Lord is saying, you need to be sensitive to this and quit. It's time to wean yourself from those past season things that aren't doing for you what they once did. And you know they're holding you back. And you know that you're holding on to something that lies behind. And because I don't believe if you don't get this, you will not have the, the second part of the word rather like if you don't get a hold of this if you don't get a hold of this then you might try to push you might try to have this baby might be breech might cause problems and it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy for you and there the the birth and the aftermath of the birth the baby might not be as healthy okay you might still be able to push and make it happen but it's going to put it in danger what the lord is wanting to do and so He's saying, it's time to be weaned off these past season things. There's nothing there for you anymore. There's nothing there for you anymore. It might be a bad habit. It might be a person. It might be a way of looking at things. I don't know what it is. Let the Lord speak to that for you. I don't want to go beyond what he's speaking. Sometimes I feel like, you know, God will bring a word, especially with with a word of prophecy. It's important not to keep going. And so I want to be sensitive to that and just let this hang in the air where he has left it. And I think that you need to go forth. If you caught this later, go back and listen to the first part. It's a prophetic word, meaning when a prophet speaks a prophetic word from the heart of God, it, it carries a weightiness to it. And if it is for you and you know it's for you, you need to, to ponder it, to chew on it. Don't just jump looking for something else. Don't, you know, you, you sit in that place 
carrying that word and steward it going if this is for me lord show me what it is that i need to be weaned from teach me train me you're gonna have to sit in the quiet place you're gonna have to sit in the quiet place you're gonna have to sit in the quiet place otherwise you're gonna try to push you're gonna try to labor and you're gonna mess things up so i, I pray that you guys hear what I'm saying, and this month in November, that some of you guys jump jump on my fast, and that I'm actually going to start Sunday because of her birthday weekend. Um, and uh, if you're not on the fasting page, you can jump on there. You might want to fast the whole time or parts of the time. I love you guys. You can go to my website to find out more about that. Go back and listen to this prophetic word. If it's for you, Receive it with joy. Receive it by faith. Receive it in prayer. Meditate on it. Ponder it. Ask the Lord to reveal how it refers to you and your situation specifically. And then trust Him with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And I'm praying for you guys because this word's for me too. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. You know, for some of you, the thing that, that, that God is weaning you from isn't your dependency on something else. Somebody else's dependency on you. Like with me, like breaking free from the nursing thing, it hurts me as much as it hurts her that there's not milk there anymore. <laughs> she kind of gets up and cries a little bit. Like, mm, and I'm like mm. Some of you need to understand that God's finished with you. In a certain situation or with a certain person. Or at least you ministering in the way that you were before. Giving in the way that you were before. And just be sensitive. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Um, I'm still putting the classes together for, for the Kingdom Living Academy online. I'm having to push it back. I know you've heard me saying fall, fall, fall. But I had planned on having full-time child care. And through much warfare. And through interviewing and everything um, I settled in that I'm not ready for that <laughs> and I couldn't find a good one and and so I'm I've received what I am ready for which is a much shorter period of child care and then I'm working on the weekends and in the evening some when she's napping but so I am I held my um, deadlines loosely and just let the spirit lead that as a mother in full-time ministry my family comes first and as much as i wanted to get all that done by fall it's not happening and i'm i'm okay with it so god's timing is perfect although i have fully launched this school here in herndon virginia if you're anywhere nearby you guys go to kingdom living ecclesia which is a meeting place for believers and that is also where the academy is you could see Kingdom Living Ecclesia online and, and, and like that page, support the, the local ministry here. And um, pray for me as I'm praying for you. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll talk soon.